Hey there everyone, a good and a happy Tuesday to all of you. Meteorologist Adam Claibon here with you and we're tracking rain as we head on into the night. Now, a lot of it will happen during the nighttime hours, so as you, you get ready to head out into your morning commute tomorrow, expect things to be fairly dry and for a lot of the day on Wednesday. But we do have another round of wind that's going to be around. Thankfully, this go around, not going to be nearly as impactful or as strong, but we are going to show you which, has the, the, which areas have the better chances of seeing some of those stronger winds. We do have a little snow to talk about across the mountains as well. First, though, let's talk about the winds and what they've done so far here for Tuesday. Generally, gusts have been about 15 to 25 miles per hour. We've seen some of the stronger and higher gusts out towards the north coast, where you can see up to 31 miles per hour there in Quileute. Expect the winds to start to ramp up just a bit more here into the first part of the night, and then the second half of the night, they'll start to die on off. The rain, that's going to be with us too. Now expect that to also be fairly light into the day on Wednesday. A break on Thursday before more of that rain comes back around into that Friday time. Halloween, trick-or-treating time, rain. Looking like it's going to be not only just a possibility, probably a probability. Here's Westport. Showers are already beginning to become a bit more consistent and steady out here towards the south coast. While up this way around Port Angeles, we do have rain shadowing that's keeping us dry for the time being here into the early part of your Tuesday evening. School that site in Granite Falls, some snow on top of Mount Pilchuck off into the distance, but dry here as you look at the ground level and also dry here in Everett as we're just seeing overcast skies and awaiting the rain to come in as we go deeper on into the night. Cloudy and gloomy here and temperatures in the mid 50s as we have that wind coming out of the south, only at about three miles per hour. So winds all, all in all relatively light. Where are we going here into the night? Well, we're not going to cool down a whole lot. We're seeing temperatures only drop into the low 50s and upper 40s, expecting to have more of that rain to come in at about 7 to 8 o'clock tonight. And you can see that window between about 7 until about midnight or 1 o'clock tonight, bringing the heaviest and the steadiest rain. And then things do start to uh, become a bit drier as we head on into early tomorrow morning. All right, let's talk about the rain. Where are we dealing with it right now? Well, most spots are actually seeing maybe a few sprinkles here and there. But as you go out towards the north and west and closer to the coast, that's where we're seeing a bit more of that steady activity. The main band, however, still just off of the coast and really impacting Vancouver Island with some really heavy rain. You can see a few lightning strikes popping up there, too. And another thing, you can see those patchy areas of blue going off to the north and east over B.C. Well, cold enough air there for them to reduce that snowfall and to get quite a bit of that up across their mountains. Down this way for us, things are going to be uh, relatively warmer. This system, though, it is beautiful. Check out the pinwheel look to that area of low pressure. It is spinning up this way and heading closer to Haida Gwaii here as we head on into the night. That's going to produce some stronger winds for southeast Alaska, western parts of uh, British Columbia for them. We're going to be a little away from the source of that wind, but we do see a, a bit more of that energy down this way, too, as this system comes on by. Now, we'll first talk about the snow and what we're expecting tonight up here across the northern Cascades. Those areas that you see shaded in purple is where we have those winter weather advisories that will start up tonight and uh, it will last until tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Now, amounts could range between about six to eight inches for elevations above 4,500 feet and areas south of there. So we're talking Stevens Pass, uh, Snoqualmie Pass for sure. Little if anything as far as accumulations with this system as it pushes on by. Now also what we're going to deal with will be some of these winds. We did talk about how they are going to start to ramp up just a bit more. Expect the first half of the night to be the time where we see some of the stronger winds for the San Juans, for areas across Camino, Whidbey Island, the Admiralty Inlet, uh, Discovery Bay, and up around more western Whatcom County, the coast. This advisory is with us until midnight tonight, so by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, this won't be in effect. We're expecting wind gusts closer to about 40, maybe 45 miles per hour. And if you remember our event over the weekend, especially out towards the coast, we saw some of those gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour. So definitely a lighter event when it comes to the winds and not going to be quite as widespread either here across western Washington. So not as impactful, thankfully, but still going to be a bit breezy. Can't completely rule out power outages, but should it be a, as widespread of an issue as what we had just here over Saturday and Sunday. All right, so looking at some of those future wind gusts, here we are at 8.30 tonight, and this is when we should be starting to see some of the stronger gusts uh, up there through uh, parts of uh, Bellingham, just across uh, the water right there, the San Juans. You can see some of those purple shadings beginning to pop up. That's where we have the best opportunity of seeing maybe some of those gusts closer to 40 miles per hour. 
We fast forward here to 1130 tonight and a lot of that wind is already beginning to die on off. You can see the coloration is less of that or we're seeing less of the, the purple popping up here. And we're definitely seeing a lot more yellows and even some blues and that's all indicating some lighter winds here as we head into the night. Gusts closer to about 15 to 25, maybe 30 at about midnight tonight and we'll continue to see those remain breezy into the day tomorrow, but should be up near criteria level for wind advisories as we head on into Wednesday. Now the rain, well, it's going to be coming down heavily at a certain point. We expect that more so around 7 to 8 to 9 o'clock here tonight as we start to see some of that main band arriving here across the region. We'll definitely have that in place for a few hours and then things do start to die off. Now early tomorrow morning for those of us who are early morning commuters, 5, 6 o'clock, you can see not a whole lot of rain popping up here on Futurecast at that point. We do have the convergence zone. That's going to be exactly where that sets up though where we see some of the impacts is where it's going to be probably the most uh, of a nuisance to get out there and drive through it because you would have some heavier downpours with the rain and some of that snow is going to try to sneak its way closer to Stevens Pass. Again, we don't expect a whole lot as snow levels will stay closer to about 4,500 feet, but that's going to hang with us here for a good portion of the day. We'll keep that around northern King County up across areas north of there into Snohomish, Skagit and Whatcom County too. Everywhere south of there have a better chances of see, have a better chance of seeing maybe a few sun breaks and areas of sunshine as we head on towards the second half of the day. We'll keep on drying out as we head on into the latter half of the day on Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday all looking to be dry, just a few clouds passing on by. Then here we go into a Thursday night into Friday. Check out that system right there on the way and that's the one that will be responsible for the rain heading into Halloween. Now rainfall with this system coming through here over the next day or so between about a half an inch to an inch. So Similar, maybe just a little less than what we had over the weekend. Rain shadow spots there around Port Townsend and Mount Vernon. Bellingham even seeing just a bit less. Hoquiam maybe picking up uh, closer to about a half an inch there at some point as we head on into the evening. And snow levels, they do drop. We get back down to about 5,000 feet into Wednesday, but you see the next kick and uh, bump up heading on into your Friday ahead of that system. So that will mean Generally, we're talking about rain across the passes at that point, and then the snow levels come back down closer to 4,000 feet with a lot of the moisture gone by Sunday. So what well, we're just talking about this particular system right here, next 24 to 36 hours. Mentioned that Stevens Pass, uh, Crystal Mountain, White Pass, really not going to see a whole lot, maybe slight or minor accumulations. And Snoqualmie Pass, we probably can just forget about it. We're just going to see plain old rain with this system as it comes on through. We might even melt some of the snow that we have up there if rain is heavy enough so uh, no worries if you're traveling across the state you should be good to go up there around Mount Baker congratulations to you snowboarders and uh, skiers excited probably get another half a foot of snow up around there now as we continue on and we look at future cast here we go into Friday morning you see that system just off of the coast the line of rain is pointed right at us and then by about the evening hours four to five to six o'clock we start to see some of that rain arriving and this is going to be the period where it can get maybe a little heavier. Now some of the models maybe have kind of backed off a little bit or not even backed off, maybe slowed the system. Let me say it that way, which means if you do get out there early enough with your kids and trick or treat, maybe you can get out there and stay dry until uh, the rain does come. But it will pick up as we head on into the overnight hours. We're expecting that to hang around as we go on into early Saturday as well and we'll keep most of the day Fairly wet heading into Saturday and then on into the day on Sunday. Fewer showers around. Things uh, will be a little cooler too as those snow levels start to come back down. And we'll keep an eye out to see if we get any decent amount of snow out of that as that happens. Temperatures though, uh, we'll expect those to be generally near, if not slightly below average for most of our days. Average high right now is at 56 degrees. So tomorrow on average day, uh, Saturday, slightly above normal and then slightly below normal for Thursday, Friday and heading on into Sunday. And then, yeah, here we go into the beginning of November on into early next week and into the latter part of next week. We're talking about temperatures staying in the mid 50s, fairly close to those seasonal norms. All right, temperatures tonight will drop down into the mid to upper 40s, a few low 50s possible where we keep a lot of that cloud coverage in place. Tomorrow's highs more in the mid 50s up this way around Blaine and Orcas Island, uh, Bellingham and Accorda's getting up to 54 degrees. We'll reach 55 in Arlington, 55 in Maltby, a high of 56 in Clinton. Seeing more mid-50s down around Redmond, Issaquah getting up to 58, 55, Snoqualmie, Des Moines at 59 degrees, around uh, just the 60 degree mark there in Belfair, Tacoma reaching 59 degrees, Olympia at that same number, and we'll see low 60s around Castle Rock and in Longview, 
50s out towards the coast and out over the Olympic Peninsula. Well, a lot of 50s there too, with uh, 40s as you go a bit higher up and 30s there at Hurricane Ridge. So trying to keep as much of that snow there as we can. Here's your seven day forecast. Uh, still looking like it's going to be a generally dry day on Wednesday. Just keep an eye out for a few of those showers, especially during the morning hours. Thursday, dry day, some fog in the morning. Friday, Halloween, some showers around, especially towards the tail end of the day and into the nighttime hours. And we'll keep some more rain around as we head on into Saturday and Sunday. And this is just all looking very, very fall like here across the area. And again, that makes sense because we are in autumn now, right? Okay, everyone. Well, try to, uh, if you have any evening plans tonight, Stay dry as much as possible and have a wonderful Wednesday tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon.